Watch advisor, where the watches are the stars. Welcome or welcome back to our channel. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And uh, yeah, you really see me this time because normally you know that when we start the video, the watches are the stars, but I am in on your screen and that's a particular purpose today. I'm sitting together with my cameraman Jorge in a high-speed train. We are actually traveling from Zurich to Biel to get to Omega. And yeah, why are we going to Omega today? I got an invitation from them a couple of days ago. They invite me today, 26th of January. They write, Omega invites you to discover a massive. And in the writing of the invitation, massive is written very tiny. So you really have to zoom up a little bit on your screen to read it. Massive change in position, watchmaking, manufacturing. Um, I have no idea what they're doing, but I have been putting one and one together concerning the latest developments of silicon hair springs and before we start and before we bring you to omega let me quickly give you a short summary of what's happening in the industry actually you know that the group of uh, patek philippe the rolex group and the swatch group they developed silicon hair springs and they got patents on it and these patents now they run out the first patent ran out last year in europe and the last patent protecting the silicon hair springs will run out this year in the us and what would have happened in case that these patents ran out is that the entire industry already waiting to be able to use also silicon hairsprings and you know that because it is a fact that you will find silicon hairsprings only in products of Rolex, Patek and the Swatch Group and yeah specialists among you will say no no that's not wrong Alexander and of course Ulysse Lana yes it's Sigatech. Sigatech was the company who mostly invented the silicon hairspring and was using it in the time being with Ulysse Nadan. They were the pioneers, the pioneers. Today, the three groups, the three major groups, Rolex, Patek and Swatchkov have been protecting those patents. And they gave the permission also to Sigatech that Sigatech may use silicon hairsprings, but only for watches of Ulysse Nadan. This, we are looking back in the glorious history of Ulysse Nadan, not in that really sad, way how they perform today. It was the glorious days when Rolf Schneider, he was still owning the company, still there. That was something different than today. But the groups, Patek, Rolex and Swatch Group, they found a way how they probably could extend the protection of the use of silicon hair springs. And this is actually what I suppose we're going to see today. Until today, those silicon hair springs, you could not regulate them. The watchmaker could not interact and do minimalistic changes on the tension of a hairspring to better adjust the accuracy of the movement. And what I expect now is the next step, the next level, silicon hairspring 2.0, if you want to call it that way. So I expect that today we are going to see the first major development of a silicon hairspring that can be the length or the strength, the tension I expect it will be on, on the tension because the length is not possible to adjust, but the, the tension of the silicon has been. And I think they're going to show us today a new development that Omega will use as the uh, flagship company or the launching company of the Swatch Group. And they will introduce probably the first adjustable silicon hairspring and i expect but this is i don't know it i just have an invitation here on my iphone i have no idea maybe i'm wrong we will see that later and i think with the fact and i have done my homework and i know that if you have an existing patent and if you on top put innovations then the protection will also be there for another i don't know how many years but we will learn that probably today so the exercise today will be probably to show us this new hairspring. This will boost accuracy, boost precision to an unexpected, almost incredible level. Don't forget, Rolex has minus two plus two seconds. Metas and Omega were zero plus five seconds. And today we will see a sensation in terms of precision watchmaking. I think this will be the way how they now will continue to protect their invention. So, Stay tuned, we will show you everything. You will be one of the first to discover everything. And yeah, let's see. Maybe I was wrong or maybe I'm, I was right. We will see a little bit later. But let's see. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Well, you saw me sitting in the train before speculating about what we are going to see with Omega today. And now we are here. We are in the Omega Museum. The presentation was just one floor up 
ended a couple of minutes ago. And yes, the things I speculated about happened. <laughs> so they really introduced us a first time a silicon hairspring that you're able to regulate. And the only little issue that was it that the whole story leaked before. So when we arrived here, we could already see some pictures somewhere on the internet. The story leaked. I don't know why, but this has happened. But nevertheless, those who leaked the story, they didn't get the whole story. And you watching this video, you get the whole story. And it is too intense to present you everything in detail, but I will try to give you a summary of what we saw today. What Omega today presented is a horological sensation. I have to say this. It is incredible what they have been doing because bringing the accuracy of a movement to zero plus two seconds is like, I don't know, innovating in a way that hasn't been feasible years ago. One couldn't imagine that this could be done and could be done in a way that it will be produced in a serial production and be implemented in a movement. So what they did, they invented years ago, Omega, Patek, Philippe and Rolex, they brought in the silicon hairsprings. And what happened now, Omega developed the silicon hairspring 2.0, 3.0, if you want to call it that way. Because what happened, normally a flat silicon hairspring, it's not able that you do any regulations, any fine adjustments on it. And what Omega today presented is the first silicon hairspring where you can intervene with a small device that is now on the bridge of the balance wheel. And you can precisely regulate by changing the tension, the tension of the hairspring, and you can now regulate it. And it's a super fine regulation. We are talking about milliseconds, about dimensions. A normal watchmaker couldn't even imagine that this exists before I saw it today in real. And so it is a horological sensation. It is bringing the Omega movement to a next level of precision. Imagine Metas, the Omega movements today are all certified by Metas, not only in terms of magnetism with those 15,000 Gauss, also in terms of precision. Six positions are measured, different temperatures are measured, and the watches are regulated from zero to plus five seconds. And now half of it, zero to plus two seconds. It is something that in the past only a tourbillon could achieve and only when the tourbillon was not worn because if you were wearing it and shaking it, the accuracy wasn't there. So bringing a movement to that level of precision is just fascinating and I've been implementing it in a way in an existing chronograph movement in that Speedmaster you see in our video. And it is only the very beginning. That's not kind of a project, a one-time shot or a limited edition or a kind of a supercar or a super watch to show what people can do. They are going to industrialize, they have been doing it, and they're going to bring step-by-step step this technology to other movements too. And bringing the precision to such a level is, I have to repeat it again, a sensation. Would, would, I just tell you something, would Rolex have done this? Today, I think ambulances would have to pick up those fanboys because they would have got heart attacks. They would discuss Oh, can I sell it for four times of the price? Blah, blah, blah. They would get so excited. Omega is doing it quietly, decently, gentleman-like. They innovate. This is a company that is not behind hypes. They are not producing any hypes here. They are innovating. They are bringing watchmaking to a next incredible level. And Rolex fanboys, don't forget, your watches just regulate from minus two to plus two seconds. And Fanboys of other companies that are hyped today, take Audemars Piguet, your uh, movements that you wear in your yeah, Royal Oaks, they regulate from zero to plus 11 seconds. And you all are almost dying if you can get one on your wrist. And Omega, in all silence, in all discreet way, how they always do it, they bring innovations as they did with the anti-magnetic movement, as they did with the meta certification, and now they bring it to the next step. This is really something incredible. And then don't forget one thing. This is a watch that is sold for 10,200 Swiss francs. I would say that's a bargain if you imagine what you get for your money. Omega again pushes the limits. We have been showing you the first steps of it. We will continue to follow on this development, of course. We are unable to explain you all the details, but I can tell you the construction is patented. 
it works, it fits, it is there. And bringing precision to zero plus two seconds in a mechanical watch that you wear on a daily basis that has been checked through the Meta certification. This watch is officially certified by an independent organization that is state-owned Institute of Metrology. Omega doesn't claim that they are doing something they can't prove. It is certified by Metas. So it is not just a one-time shot. It is what it is. And it will come to more of Omega's calibers in the future. And what they have done, you have to really raise your heads. Chapeau in French. The only thing that makes me a little bit sad is that it was leaked first. I don't understand why this happened, but it happened. And you stay tuned on our channel on Watch Advisor. We will bring you much more of this technology in the next weeks as far as we put together more videos or another video where we explain you all the details. For today, goodbye here from Omega. I am really, you know, you know me, guys. And I am not about the hypes. I am not the guy about... Uh, if a company introduces a new color of a dial and everybody gets almost, uh, yeah, they, they all day, heart rate goes up to 200. If a new color is presented in that, who cares about the color of a dial? This is real watchmaking. This brand, Omega, is an industrial company. They are showing what is possible. And this is so cool. You get the very best reliable stuff you can imagine and you can buy it. These watches will be at Omega Boutiques. You don't have to buy it for triple of the price and all these silly games. It won't happen. It's Omega. And so I'm ah, excited to bring you more about it. We will have the watch. We will show you the watch in all details later. First pictures there. Stay tuned on Watch Advisor and think about, is it a hype that is cool or is it real watchmaking, new technology? What is what do you think? Let me know in the comment section and goodbye from today. And excuse me that I'm so excited, but this is really cool. I never expected in my life that I would see a mechanical wristwatch being accurate to zero to plus two seconds. This is just makes me speechless.